So welcome back to TF3, and of course Stan and Dave, just about to go and play some football with Boltwood. <laughs> okay boys, so as you can probably tell from that footage that we just shot, yeah. the other team didn't turn up. Too late. They heard that we're invincible, yeah. they heard that we've won four on the trot, they've heard we scored the most goals in the league, conceded the least. So it's another win for us, automatic 3-0 win. We'll, we'll, we'll play again next week, I think the team will turn up. We'll try and film a little bit for you guys so you can actually see the skills. I don't think that was represented with the skills. No, I know no. some step overs from you. Yeah, a few, a few all pop turns. Um, we're on the way to the pub now, we're going to get a quick post-match point. And we're going to answer some of your questions. Yeah, I like drinking me. Yeah, uh, First up, we've got a question here from Jack, who says, which club should Kylian Mbappe join this summer? Now, obviously, he could stay at Monaco. He could rumors are Manchester United are in for him, Manchester City are in for him, Real Madrid and Barcelona. What do you reckon, Dave? Which club is he best suited for his career progression? He's only 18 years old. I'd say Monaco if I was Kylian Mbappe right now, I think that's the perfect thing to do. But in terms of the clubs he'd suit, I think he'd suit any of the clubs he reeled off there. Barcelona, you know, go through a slight transition, Enrique out, you know, the new manager, we don't know who that is coming in. Could use Kylian Mbappe as a, as a forward, whether it's Real Madrid, Benzema, is he as good as he used to be with Kylian Mbappe coming in through the middle? But again, Ronaldo looks like he wants to play as a striker. Even as our heavily linked to Real Madrid. Maybe Manchester City is the perfect place under Pep Guardiola, you know, a young player that you can mould as a wide forward or as a as a striker. Could mm. be a good option. Obviously an incredible player, but the buyout clause is apparently a hundred million pounds. Is he worth that? Is anyone worth that? I'd say so. Really? So his goal scoring record for his age is ridiculous. You know, five goals in the knockout stage in the Champions League, tied with Ronaldo as the, the top scorer, which is pretty incredible. I think he scored more goals um, in the Champions League than Gareth Bale's managed in the last two seasons. Wow. So there's some big stats there, but I think in terms of his style of football, he's very, very difficult to play against. He's sort of a forward that starts centrally that drifts wide, causes you so much problems with a centre back. One day centre backs are very good on the ball, mm. and it kind of takes away from their natural ability to defend. And they're not very comfortable at defending in the channels, and that's where Kylian Mbappe will pull you that way and then take you on and usually get a shot away or cross. Okay, next question is from Harsh Singer, long time oh, yeah. listener, long time friend. Uh, which formation and transfers would make Manchester United title challenges next season? He reckons it would be a 4 3 3 De Gea, Fosu Mensa, Bailly, sign Jimenez, get Luke Shaw back at left back regularly, sign Weigel, Pogba Herrera, Martial, sign Griezmann, and get Mikita. Does that taste team interesting? That's why Griezmann as a, as a striker probably would prefer him to play in a 4 2 3 1. Yeah. Pogba, Herrera, base of midfield. The back four, I think there's only work to be done at centre half. I think left back, that's where you know, you've got Darmian in there, you've got Blind, you've got Luke Shaw. Mm. I think as a centre back, though, a partner for Eric Bay is the biggest priority for me in the summer, whether it is someone like Jose Jimenez, who's been fantastic for Atletico Madrid in the last two seasons. Maybe some, some old, an old head would be better, though, someone like Benucci. Obviously, would massively upgrade Manchester United and complete the side. But again, it's goals, you know, that, that, there's some stats that are ridiculous. You know, if United have had the the second most sorry shots inside the box in the Premier League, but they've only converted, I think they've ranked 16th in conversion rates, so there's goals needed from midfield. But I do like Marcus Rashford, and I do like Anthony Martial in the front three. That would be quite nice. The fluidity that Martial showed in recent weeks and playing as a striker could work really well with Martial. Who's going to be the nine? Who's going to be left wing? What's going to happen with the, the striking options? Obviously, it's that time. Mm. Out for the season, yeah. he looks like out for potentially eight, nine months. He might have seen a club talk that he's already apparently agreed to do about their galaxy pack. Do you think Rashford is the man who can sort of lead the line on his own almost in that squad there for Manchester United next season? I think it'll be a dual role between both Rashford and Martial, depending on what the opposition plays, 
who the opposition are, rotating I think he does, I think, he, I think he's starting to. I think the, the big start that came out of the game against Burnley was he, he made uh, more sprints than any other player on the pitch, the most in the game, 73, and the most in the season that he's managed. So he is putting that work in and his you know, the counter attack, that, that drive through midfield, you're not going to get that with Zlatan. For me, with the with the injury, there's no point re, you know getting a new contract with Zlatan. It's kind of like a knee injury for a player of that age, you're going to lose that that little extra 5%, which unfortunately isn't good enough for Premier League level. Let's talk about that injury because there's a question here from Tom saying, Dave, how are you feeling about the bleach bond there? We put the poll on Twitter, we did say Void. in the podcast. Already, the we, Statman we, Army, you the Statman, they, they voted out. The Statman Army, I think, shifted it by about 1%. Oh, the the common sense prevailed. Um, obviously, you guys, if you don't know, we had the bet going on from June last year. I said Zlatan was going to score less than 20 league goals. Like, this season, you said more than 20. Yeah. He was on 17, I think, when he obviously got this massive knee injury. We sort of had the vote. Is the bet void? Is Dave going to have to go to Bleach Bond? Is it double or nothing? 2,000 votes. 60% basically said you're going to Bleach Bond. How you feel? He's going to have to have to see six, sick people. Sick people. Sick in the house. Common sense for You never know that Zlatan Ibrahimovic may return for the last day of the season. Well, I still bang a hat to him. I'm going to. They're going to use some horse placenta. They're going to rub it on the knee and it's just going to be fine. I think that's going to heal that. How are you feeling? You've got to go to Bridgeport. It's happening at some point. It's not. It's like I'm going to score. Three goals. It's still in denial, boys. It's still in denial. It's going to be fantastic. He hasn't accepted it yet. I've made peace of it when Zlatan scores. Dave hasn't made peace of it. Final question is from Ewan at Deadly Greasy. Could be a hint as to the answer here. Who do you think will be the first player to win the Ballon d'Or after Ronaldo and Messi's dominance ends? Firstly, who do you think should and obviously there's a lot mm. of time to go before this happens. Who should win the next round up? Because it feels like, you know, with the Al Clasico uh, last weekend, there seems to be a growing acknowledgement that Messi is the best player in the world. Yeah. He's had a fantastic season this season despite some difficulties for Barcelona. But I wouldn't... Ronaldo might be winning the Champions League, might be winning the league. This is what I mean. I, I wouldn't say the Messi's the best player. But he's not had the best oh, season. But what's, the, what's the Ballon d'Or? What is that? It? Is the Ballon? This is the problem with the Ballon d'Or. It's it should be the player that's played the best in that calendar year, mm. which would you know. Is that that's Messi? You'd argue that it could be someone like Marcelo at Real Madrid. Could maybe. Yeah, we'll see. Who do you think is going to be the next person after Messi? Neymar. It's got to be, hasn't it? It's got to be Neymar. We I think. saw the performance, I think, against yeah. PSG in that second leg. So it'll be the consistency, up, right? Yeah. Messi will go. He'll hit his absolute peak. Yeah. Um, it's it's got got Neymar. Neymar. Maybe Griezmann will be up there. I think. We're seeing this season. I think Griezmann's sort of caught in the Messi and Ronaldo age bracket that unfortunately. 26 is it? Yeah. Yeah. But I suppose the, the thing with Neymar, I reckon Messi will retire, then everyone will go, oh, actually, this Neymar fell pretty decent. So I think someone will be winning it before those two retire. I think we've seen this season the sort of players that can maybe be in that bracket, be it Neymar, be it players like Paolo Barbara, be it players like mm. Antoine Griezmann, who are sort of in that. We're almost getting into the Paul conversation. Popper, right? Not yet, but they get into that conversation right now. It could happen anyway, guys. Listen, those are your questions and answers. The cues are a thanks for joining us. We'll see you next time on the front three vlogs. Uh, until then, Dave, yes, where can people find you on the internet? Monday, football podcast, of course, every day, Monday to Friday. I love it, man. Uh, guys, you can check me out on Adam Baldwin on Twitter. Subscribe, like, is that what people say? Yeah, they say like, comment. You're not very um, good at this YouTube stuff, yeah, share with your, your pals. Mom. Sorry, yeah, pals, yeah. Pals, okay. we'll see you next time.